This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. At a news conference in Washington today, President Bush said he could understand if the American public was frustrated about his ability and that of the Congress to govern. The federal government is back at work today, thanks to legislation the president signed early this morning, which lets the government temporarily spend money again. But now that the White House and the congressional leadership have failed in their supposedly cooperative budget endeavors, the challenge of raising revenue and saving money in very specific areas is back with the Congress, whose latest proposal on taxes has been shot down by the president. ABC's Britt Hume is at the White House. At a late afternoon meeting with senior Senate Republicans, the president was warned that the Democrats would never give him a favorable deal if he tried to trade a higher top tax rate for a cut in the capital gains tax. He would be better off rejecting any such deal before it got started, he was told. Mr. Bush agreed. Our uniform position was uh, that we will not go up on the rates, not one percent, not two percent, not one tenth of one percent, and, uh, and we will leave the rates where they are, drop capital gains, and do nothing about the rates. Earlier, the president had suggested he might make such a trade if the terms were right. At a news conference, his response to the embarrassing defeat of last week's budget deal was to say he'd now work with the Democratic-controlled committees in Congress. He even suggested the bloody events of last week could actually help. So well, I think what we'll end up doing is staying very close to the agreement that, that I reached with the uh, Republican and Democratic leaders. The last couple of uh, uh, few days had been like a catharsis. There's been a, a clearing of the air. He was asked if he was angry with his negotiating team, especially Chief of Staff Sununu, whom Republicans accused of bullying tactics in trying to sell last week's deal. <laughs> Absolutely not. I have full confidence in him. And uh, when the passions get high, I understand that uh, there's bound to be a little broken China up there. But how would he now rally the Republicans who deserted him on the vote last week? Listen intently, reach out to heal, get everybody to, in the room and say, now wait a minute, how are we going to get something done? It's easy to be against something, but how, what are we going to be for? One thing Mr. Bush said he could be for was a higher tax rate for the rich, something many Democrats want, in return for the cut in the capital gains tax Mr. Bush has long wanted. And uh, if it's proper, if it can be worked in the proper um, uh, balance between the capital gain rate and the income tax changes, fine. Well, we now know one thing Mr. Bush isn't going to be for, and he may need to use his veto power to back up that position. The president suggested today that it is only half time in this bitter budget game, but as he well knows, as this second half begins, the other team, the one that controls Congress, has the ball. Rit Hume, ABC News, the White House. The real problem for the budget writers on Capitol Hill is this. How will they be able to put together, in the glare of publicity for the next 10 days, what a small group from the White House and Congress were unable to do in private over five months? On Capitol Hill, ABC's Jim Wooten. Capitol Hill was like the eye of a hurricane today the calm after one budget storm and before the next. Only the biggest shape of a new budget was visible, but it clearly suggests fewer breaks for the rich and fewer cuts in benefits for the elderly. Budget crunchers playing with the numbers for the Senate Finance Committee came up with some interesting possibilities. On Medicare, instead of a $66 billion cut, $43 billion. And the old defeated package's 12 cents per gallon gasoline tax would come down to nine. As with everything else on the budget so far, the only sure thing is that these numbers will change. Getting pretty testy in Congress these days. The Republicans are angry with each other, depending on which way they voted on the original budget package, and sore with President Bush for caving in to the Democrats. The Democrats, on the other hand, are flexing their muscles, believing they've wrestled the budget and tax issue away from Mr. Bush and his party. So what began four months ago as a bipartisan effort to reduce the budget deficit has now become a rather basic and bloody political struggle. Jim Wooten, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Economic prices, oil prices in New York today closed over $40 a barrel. That's a record high. That and the budget mess sent the Dow Jones Industrials plummeting down more than 78 points to close at 24.45 and the trading was moderate. When we come back, world reaction to the killings yesterday in Jerusalem. On the American agenda tonight, the battle over the billboards. And a formal apology plus $20,000 to Japanese Americans imprisoned during World War II.